Washington State is making great whiskey. Case in point, Woodenville Whiskey Company. Grown, mashed, distilled, aged, and bottled in Woodenville, Washington. Let's find out how this Washington State distillery is becoming a standout in a crowded arena of craft distilleries across the country right now on the Mash and Drum. <laughs> Washington has a great pedigree of creating sought-after spirits. Uh, sitting just a few miles north of Seattle, this small suburb is home to more than 100 winery tasting rooms, six breweries, and five other distilleries, and is now home to its largest craft distillery, Woodenville Whiskey Company. Woodenville Whiskey opened its doors in 2010 with the help of industry legend, the late great Dave Pickerel, who has his thumbprint on countless craft distilleries across the country. Now, working with founders Orlin Sorensen and Brett Carlisle, the dream was to make the greatest craft whiskey in the world by bringing the time-honored traditions of bourbon production into a craft environment using the highest quality local grown grains, the best barrels and coopers in the world, and the most technologically advanced distilling equipment. The goal was to eventually have a pure Washington State bourbon which had been aged in full-sized barrels. To this end, they waited around five years to bring to market their first straight bourbon whiskey. As I mentioned, this is 100% Washington State made, so to qualify for a craft distillery license, Washington distillers need to source at least 50% of their grain from in-state growers. Now for Woodenville, that means they needed to find a good source of local grain, so the corn, rye, and barley are grown exclusively for them on the Omelin family farm in Quincy, Washington. So the whiskey itself is distilled in Woodenville, Washington, pot still style. It's proofed down to 55% ABV using Cascade Mountain water. Now all of their barrels are seasoned for 18 months in the open air, wind, rain, and snow prior to being coopered. And once filled with their new distillate in Woodenville, they are shipped to their aging warehouses back over the mountains to Quincy, Washington, where more extreme weather conditions produce a more flavorful whiskey. The temperature swings over there can be 100 degrees in a single day, explains distiller Mike Stein, which means the whiskey ages faster than it would in temperate western Washington. Woodenville Whiskey Company has been evolving rapidly, and in the beginning they were known for its small barrel aging, which is a strategy that a lot of craft distilleries use to get their distillate aged up a little bit faster. Uh, but over the years, they've always had the goal to move the production into full-size casks, and that's what they're doing now. And in 2012, Woodenville Whiskey outgrew their previous facility and moved into a bigger facility to keep up production and create a more immersive experience for their visitors. Woodenville is now the largest distillery in Washington State by a huge margin, and they are continuing to create award-winning whiskeys and upcoming experimental whiskeys with different mash bills and finishes as well. So today we're going to be exploring their 90 proof straight bourbon whiskey and their 90 proof 100% rye whiskey. So first, the bourbon. Their small batch bourbon is bottled at 90 proof and uses a traditional mash bill of corn, rye, and malted barley. As I mentioned, the grains are mashed, distilled, and barreled on site in Woodenville. The barrels are then slowly toasted and heavily charred before aging for five years in Quincy, Washington. Now this sports a distinctive bottle style and retails for about 55 bucks. All right, before we get started, I want to give a big shout out to Joseph Brazo and Christine Deems, a couple of my viewers that helped me get these. Uh, they live out west, and I was really excited to try these and do a review with you guys. So let's get into the nose first. Man, so first thing I get on the nose is like this cherry maple syrup type note I'm getting. There's a bit of chocolate in there. Now, one attribute I get from any whiskey I usually try that's from out west is this, this root beer note to it. And I think there's some terroir involved in there, basically where the grains are grown. It has this distinctive type flavor profile. So it's really unique and I absolutely love it. Yeah, it smells very creamy on the nose. It's really a good mix of traditional bourbon scents that you would get from a Kentucky bourbon. You get your caramels, your vanillas, but kind of underlying all that, there's that, there's that Washington State influence that's in there. Yeah, root beer, chocolate, creamy vanilla. Definitely get a little bit of cherry in there too. I could also explain it like, like almost like a fresh cut wood type scent to it that you get. Uh, if, you've ever, if you've ever been to a lumber yard and if you smell like a, a fresh cut of wood and that scent it gives off, you get that a little bit in the glass too. Yeah, it's got a really nice balanced nose. Like I said, you get that really nice balance of creme brulee, vanilla, caramel, but then it's kind of mixed in with that 
Washington or that Western type whiskey style with that root beer note, a little bit of honey, just a really good nose. All right, let's go in for a taste and see how it goes. Wow, very, very fruity on the nose. I really like the fruit aspect on here. Man, it's almost, uh, it's like that cherry, it's not so much cherry anymore, it's kind of evolving into maybe more of a strawberry, honey type aspect to it. Definitely get a little bit of that fresh cut wood uh, flavor on there, but not in a bad way. Mm, let's try for another sip. Yeah, maple syrup. You're getting some oak influence in there too. Has a nice oaky presence right on the back end, but there's a lot of sweet it goes through. One thing I will say on the palate, it's very creamy. Really good mouthfeel to it. I think that has to do with the pot still. I've talked about pot stills before, how using a pot still can give the whiskey a little bit more of a creamier flavor profile. It's definitely holding true in this whiskey. Let's go for another sip. Mm, getting a little bit more of that chocolate note in there. Cinnamon, getting some baking spices in here a little bit too. For a five-year-old bourbon, it's bringing a lot of flavor, a lot of texture to it. It's good. I don't think it's it's overly complex. Remember, it's only five years old. But I think for a five-year-old whiskey, what you're getting for a five-year-old bourbon, it is bringing a lot of flavors that you normally wouldn't get from something this young from a craft distillery. I really love the uh, the flavors it's bringing, which is why I think so many people are impressed with it. Let's go for one last sip of the bourbon. Cheers. All right, so front of the palate, this is honey, strawberry, a little bit of maple syrup. As it works its way back, it starts getting uh, fruity. You get a little more of that strawberry note. And then the chocolate, root beer, that peppery and that oak finish kind of finish everything off, which is really nice. Just a very well-balanced bourbon. Like I said, it's, it's a really good balance of familiar flavors and also something new. All right, so let's try the rye next. Now, the 100% rye whiskey is also bottled at 90 proof, and you guessed it, 100% rye grown exclusively on Omlin Family Farm. This uses the same barrel style as the bourbon. Uh, the rye is an NAS, but is supposedly also aged for about five years in Quincy, Washington as well. This also retails for about 55 bucks. All right, so let's go for the rye here on the nose. Wow, completely different nose. This is, this is actually very fruity on the nose, but also some mint. This is a darker fruit. I'm getting blackberry and mint on the nose, really strong. I'm getting a little bit of that fresh cut wood note on here too, a little bit of that fresh cut lumber. But this one to me is surprising. It's, it's more um, uh, cream soda type flavor. Whereas the bourbon I'm getting root beer, but this one I'm getting cream soda. <laughs> yeah, it almost smells like it's gonna be effervescent almost. Like it has like this cream soda quality to it. It's really, really cool on the nose. Very fruity. Definitely has some good rye spice in there. A little bit of oak. But again, I'm really liking the balance here of sweet and spicy as well. Now, the fact that this is aged about five years, I think is a really good thing because a lot of younger ryes that you see hit the market, especially from craft distilleries, sometimes they release them only about two years old. So the fact that this is a full five years old, if that's the case, I think that that makes sense considering what I'm getting on the nose. It's, it's pretty distinctive and pretty layered in flavor. Yeah, a lot of dark fruits, a lot of mint, some spice. Still getting that good caramel, a little bit of that honey characteristic too. Just a really good nose on this rye. All right, let's go for a sip, here we go. Great spice up front, really good rye spice. I think being five years about is, is really kind of mellows out the spice a little bit, but you do get a good sense of rye spice right on the front of the palate. Then this just turns to like fruit and vanilla, finishes really nicely. You get the spice in the beginning and then you get it on the finish, but in between you get these really nice fruit flavors, that cream soda aspect to it. Like I said, it's almost effervescent on the back end. Really interesting, let's go for another sip. All right, so on the second sip, now the fruit is taking a little bit more of a back seat. Now you're getting those traditional rye spices there, a little bit more citrus. There's almost like a sandalwood type flavor going on in the rye. Really nice. Let's go for one more sip. Yeah, a little more baking spices now are coming to the front. Getting a nice clove aspect here too, I think. There's a little bit of hints of clove there, some cinnamon. I think it's more clove though than cinnamon. 
Again, very good creamy mouthfeel, I think from that, that pot still. But yeah, that finish, I'm getting like this cream soda effervescent combined with, with that wood spice, that sandalwood flavor. It's really unique, very well balanced, really good balance of sweet and spice. One last sip. Again, I think this is a really great example of something familiar and also something a little bit new. You have the familiar flavors, the citrus, the, the spiciness, the, the mouthfeel, the caramel, the vanilla, some of the fruit aspect to it. But then you add in that cream soda effervescence along with that, that sandalwood and that wood spice. It's just a really good balance of something familiar and something new. Finish is really good on it. Both of these finish in a, probably in the medium aspect. It's not too long. Both very easy sippers, uh, but also both very flavorful and very creamy. All right, let's go to the breakdown for both of these. So let's start with the price. The price is 55 bucks. Where do I assess the value? I would say the value is above average here. At 55 bucks, I think the price is where it should be, but I think the quality and flavor that you're getting from Woodenville, I think is definitely up a notch than what you would get from other craft distilleries for sometimes even higher prices. Now I do think Woodenville has a unique but delicious flavor profile and they're doing everything right when you talk about growing their grain, distilling, aging, and innovating on site. When it comes to quality from new distilleries, I would put them right up there with what New Riff and what Wilderness Trail are doing. So availability, I'm gonna say this is fair but improving. This was only available in Washington State at launch, but in 2017, Moe Hennessy, the parent company of Glen Morangi and Ardbeg Scotch, acquired Woodenville Whiskey Company. Now with that acquisition, Moe Hennessy has already increased production and brought the brand to more states like California, Florida, and Illinois. Now with their rapid growth from Moe Hennessy acquiring them, uh, their footprint across the country has grown a little bit larger. Definitely go to their website and check out their product locator to see if there's any Woodenville whiskey near you. So is this a recommend? I would say absolutely, definitely yes. Go check them out if you could find it anywhere near you. I think any craft distillery that's creating something of this high quality from grain to glass, it's five years old, it's definitely worth checking out. While it may not be the Kentucky bourbon profile you may be used to, you'd be doing yourself a disservice to not try delicious bourbons and whiskeys crafted from other states. Woodenville is a brand you definitely wanna try and definitely pay attention to. And like I said, there's something in here that's new and familiar, and it's just a great combination of flavors for you to try. All right, guys, well, thanks again for watching the Master Drum Whiskey Room for this review of the Woodenville Whiskey Company bourbon and rye. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram and find me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had these, if you're a fan. Uh, and as I always say, it is not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'm gonna have some more Woodenville. Take care, everybody. See you next time on the Mash and Drum.